I found my love for RPG horror games back in 2015 with a game called Misa, and I'm sure you guys probably know of that game. But that's not why I'm here today, but that is important in itself to just lay down the foundations of what I think is today's topic, which is Memories of Fear. On February 23rd of 2021, the team has decided that this is the time now to be able to just, just leave everything as it is and move on with their lives in order to pursue what it is that they want to do in their lives and for that I can't blame them of sorts so I would like to um, congratulate them actually for putting together all of the different games that they've had throughout the many years that they've been a part of the community the small community that is RPG Maker Horror Games, RPG Horror Games etc etc free and wear Japanese horror games as it is in their uh, Tumblr posts. So I'm just going to read it out for you, it's going to be like a bit of a diary entry here. Memories of Fear is retiring. We at Memories of Fear decided that we will be retiring our fan translation group as of February the 23rd of 2021. Color Rose, translator and enigmophobia editor, has started this group back in April 2012, before I ever encountered a love for these games, or even encountered these games in general. Due to their love for the game Corpse Party for the PlayStation Portable, our original plan was to translate Japanese Corpse Party fan games as shown with our first release being Corpse Party Rebuilt. However, our love for role-playing game, adventure game, sorry, both horror and otherwise, made us extend our scope to the translation team of other games created in RPG Maker and Wolf RPG Editor. Yep, there's been a bunch of them. Our dedicated QA tester, Adriel Gamer, was also a big part of this. He joined the group on our very first project and has been with us ever since. With about 30 games released under our group's name, we've decided that it is time for us to move on. While we greatly enjoyed our time working together as a group and delivering these games to an English-speaking audience, the time feels right to retire. Especially now that we have more responsibilities to come into our lives as we've gotten older. Yep, that's for everyone, basically. When we get older, we discover new things, have new responsibilities in life, and therefore need to adapt to new situations, and therefore we need to sacrifice part of our past self in order to move on to a better future, which I can totally understand in this case. Like, like any path in life that you go in, you always need to know that there are going to be some things which you need to put in the past in order to be able to move on with yourselves such as our full-time jobs families to take care of and busy schedules which has limited our ability to focus on translation work as much as we previously did we want to thank everyone for their support over the past eight years we'd also like to thank everyone for taking time out of your schedule to play stream and share our translation thank you for everything that you've done memory sophia i think without you we would not have encountered such beautiful games especially for me my personal favorite which is also the most recent and most la so the last of their games being purgatory 2 which has been an absolute wonder of a game i think both the translators and the developer themselves have done an incredible job on purgatory 2 along with demonic mode as well being like this horrifically difficult challenge to overcome there have been other translators as well fiji person stood around probably question mark with other games tosaiki haven't heard of in forever i think the last game that they translated was candle so that means the question of who is going to translate the next purgatory games purgatory x and purgatory 3 well there's only one way to find out and that is through the test of time <laughs> like i completely understand what memory sophia are doing i feel like that having a huge amount of time inputted into translating games it can be a bit soul tearing in a way doing the same thing over and over and over again even though you're using a different game as a means to continue your work or continue your fan work but i i thoroughly appreciate everything that memory sophia has done for the entire community but also as well in a way for um, streamers like us just to be able to play more games and discover more games as well like if it wasn't for memories of fear i wouldn't be able to discover games like corpse party and purgatory 
And there were many other games as well. I can't think off the top of my head. Aeroni, is that one of them? So here's some questions. Okay. Uh, did drama part play a part in your community's desire to retire? No, not at all. Not only was the decision a mutual agreement we carefully discussed, but we also closed close friends who plan to remain as such for many years to come exactly i think one of the worst things to happen is for a group to break off because of internal annoyances or internal conflicts which happen throughout the team which can ultimately lead to projects breaking breaking down and therefore stuff that would be currently in a work um would be scrapped or cancelled altogether but because of the fact that they managed to finish the translation would mean that it is much less likely for the group to disperse because of internal arguments and stuff like that. Does that mean that Purgatory 2 and Purgatory 2 Demonic Mode is your final translation? Yes, that is correct. We are happy we were able to go up with a big bang with Purgatory 2 as it's a game we all loved and enjoyed working on. I shared in my Purgatory 2 playthrough and also as well more recently as well just throughout my Twitter that I absolutely love the game as well and I am thoroughly excited for more if it comes out in English if another team or another individual carries a flag or carries a torch that memories of fear have done for Purgatories 1 and 2 and be able to continue the work to be able to um, make it in English for Western um, audience the English speaking audience what will happen to your website? Our previous website, memoriesoffear.com, will be closed down at the end of February 2021. We will now be hosting our games over at our Memories of Fear forum at that site. What will happen to your Tumblr and Twitter? They will both stay open for pos... Pol how do you say that word? Something's sake. <laughs> but they will have little to no activity. However, we're still trying to answer any questions related directly towards our projects to the extent we are able to. What will happen to your Discord? It will always stay open for those who want to talk about our games. If I have a question slash comment slash concern about one of your translations, where do I submit it to? You can still submit it to our Tumblr where we'll be, we will look into it when we're able to. You can additionally try contact, t contacting us on our Discord or our at slash hashtag report problems channel okay i'm gonna continue i mean lay off this accent now and finally if a future sequel slash continuation slash spin-off gets released of one of the games that you previously translated for in the past uh we'd be able to translate it unfortunately we'll not be able to translate these titles otherwise the group will not um say that this is like their final farewell for translating their games any games. We welcome anyone to translate these games in Layu for us. Thank you for supporting us throughout these years. Sincerely, Memories of Fear, Kula Rose, Translator, Enigmophobia, Editor, and okay. I literally thought there was like more than three people, but maybe that's my bad on that account. Am I sad to see them not translating games anymore? Absolutely. But of course, ultimately, it's down to them to be able to decide what is best for them and what is what needs to take account into their responsibilities in life like we can't always pursue exactly the same thing for so many years like this group has been around more than i have in this community so therefore they got a bit more prior knowledge towards like different things that have happened in the community before i came along i still like to think that i'm a newbie in this community for goodness sakes even though like people watch my videos and all stuff like that there's so many other channels out there that have a huge amount of um, recognition and attention towards which i think is brilliant but i still like to think that i'm a newbie in, in this sort of stuff even after like five six years into this like i still think i'm a newbie in some ways just a little glimpse of the different games that i've played from this translation team corpse party we built is the only corpse party i played from the team itself i haven't played any of the other corpse parties in which they translated if you let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that i will be very willing to do that this game was made before i was even born 1992 <laughs> <laughs> I'm 27 years old and I feel, I still feel old of that, but this makes me feel, I don't know, young. Up in Jamaica, Dante 98 was the original engine in which Corpse Party was built in. You can see the differences between the Japanese, uh, or the original version in Japanese and the rebuilt version. That's why it's called rebuilt, because I think the team actually rebuilt the entire game so that it's within a engine which can, um, um, 
what do you call it, to be able to hold the English language in a way, or just rebuild in a way so that it is actually accessible for the RPG Maker to, um, RPG Maker engine to recognize. Toilet in Wonderland is one I uh, briefly played, I didn't finish it, like I thought it was like a bit too gross in the wrong way for me to be able to finish, but I think some people have got a huge amount of laughs throughout this game, and honestly I can't, I'm not surprised by that, but still it's just a little, a little too much for me, and also a lot of copywritten music as well with you, oh my gosh, Aeroni, another classic, just run away and hide in the closet from these purple, sorry, blue horrific monsters. It doesn't take 15 to 30 minutes to complete. If only if you know what you're doing, it might be the case. And also, this is one of those other games where, like, it holds really, really difficult puzzles in and not being able to actually go through it without an actual walkthrough. Wink, wink. Even though, <laughs> even though my own walkthroughs back then when I originally played this game weren't exactly the best because, well, I was still developing the channel at the time in a way which I was trying to be recognized, but also kind of suiting my own mood as well as like um what works what doesn't work what works out what doesn't work out what sort of things can i do which appeases to the most amount of people in the community itself but still at the same time trying to be as entertaining as it can friendship this is one of the more recent uh translations that the team made and it was a very short game but also as well as i think i remember it's quite a grotesque game in itself like three, like not three people going to a house, but it's like one of the girls was, was a bit cuckoo-y and the other two, the other one we didn't really see throughout the game and the one we played as, I'm not sure why, but I don't know if like if we're playing with a full deck of cards. Ghost School is kind of like a corpse party fan game in a sort of a way. When you go into it, you can definitely have a corpse party vibe on it, but it's also one of the few games that the team uh, translated not in Wolf RPG Editor, but but RPG Maker in itself, and I remember going throughout the entirety of this game and being quite satisfied with the experience that I had of this game. Uh, didn't find anything wrong with the actual translation itself. I mean, my grammar moment probably isn't the best, but <laughs> when you're trying to figure stuff on the spot, it can be a bit uh, delirious in a way. But yeah, different characters in this game. I think when a game has too many characters, it can kind of um, defocuses the uh, aim of a game in itself and this game doesn't have too many of them but it can get to a point where it's like where does the focus go does it go to this group or does it go to that group june bright nightmare was a game i never managed to get to work at the time because it was either really framey or when you try to click stuff it wasn't responding but i think personally it was a computer issue at the time when i was trying to run this game also like the other corpse party games let me know if you would like me to cover this game and i'll gladly do that but it was more of a technicality issue, which was what I was encountering with this game, which didn't allow me to play this game for more than one part. I, can't, I don't remember if I actually deleted that video or not. Ah, uh, the original Purgatory. It was such a short game, but it was so sweet at the same time, like playing as Enry and give, going through it. <laughs> like, I don't really remember what the context of the the first game aside from like what happened at the end because we got like a refresh of what happened but so like, the original like these chirbies are so cute in their own ways like going through the second game we can really tell like the cuteness oh gosh look at that monstrosity of it being there like Henry was the only character and we got very minimal context about the entire game I believe aside from the ending which um we knew it was going to go to like a second game or sorts, but we couldn't really tell like who was playing because Henry to us it was either the case of was she going to be like a villain in the next game or was she going to be a hero? Spoiler alert, she definitely was a hero in the second game. Another series I really enjoyed, The Mystery Files of Detective Inyaba, consisting of over three different uh, volumes in which we translators have translated from Japanese to English. Like, there's a lot of mystery in this game and, like, solving, like, who murdered and doing a different voice acting for the butler of this game as well. Was it the butler? Wait, was it butler in the third game? Wait, the second game. That was more, um... It wasn't as adventurous the second game, but it was definitely more um, more of a forensic sort of game where you're breaking down who's done what for the game and 
But this first one and the third one are more adventurous type where you're going around the entire premises to find different clues and different hints as to like who is do doing the murder and stuff like that. Escapade of this was a cute game. Like going through, I think it was like only a few different rooms. The other one was a, I think, is this a tower? Yeah, this is definitely the tower one where we go through and different cat puns throughout the entire game. Like it was just so hilarious, but at the same time so cute with the, uh, the protagonist just going throughout the game and doing all of her different mischievousness stuff. So then there's this evil scientist who try to make the uh, the life of the protagonist miserable but still being very cute in a way because you know it was going to be a tale that would end happily ever after just because well why would a game with this cute visualness end badly i mean how could it Cat tower Feliz. Don't, don't know if it's like the uh, the sequel to escapade but there's another game Oh, this is the tower game. Oh, yes. Okay. So we had a limited amount of time to go through the tower. And um, I'm not sure if this is a grown-up version of a protagonist or not. No, this confirms that they have different names. Like when we go down to... Okay, yeah. They have different names. So there's no connections between the two universes. Except for the fact they both contain cats. Detective Inaba 2. The same protagonist as last time. Because, well, it is in the name of the game in itself. I remember the third game a bit more being a bit more horrific. While this one has been a bit more subdued. I also remember you. The shy maid of the game in itself. Usually the shy and quiet ones hold the most mystery and the most answers to questions because they're very good listeners. Oh yeah, remember you? You kept talking a lot, didn't you? Uh, wait, was it you or was it a different character? Oh, we get to the rich folks of the family. All we cared about was the money aspect of everything. And I remember these two um, in the screen right now being like the main victims, but also at the same time, uh, Azus saw being the murderer of a father and then we have the the elderly mother who has stockholm syndrome so like it doesn't matter about what the husband did she would always forgive and always saw him in a good in a good way because of um manipulation sort of like that's how manipulation goes down like you manipulate the mind of somebody and then therefore it doesn't matter what they say or what they think you always think highly of them Oh, this was the butler I imitated. <laughs> Mercer Hur is a Sakaki household butler. He keeps a cool, expressionless poker face and never betrays his true feelings. Sensei Shihara has held his post as the family butler for a long period of time. He is perfectly capable of performing various tasks and errands on his own. <laughs> Maybe one day I should perform voice acting for butlers. I played with this game once. Uh, I'm not too sure why I didn't really pick up on it. I think the game itself was too complicated the object, but I remember throughout the time that I did play this game, but it was kind of like another one of those mystery kind of games, except um, we don't have a head as a character, but we put different objects in our head, the objective in a way. He would find out answers to his forgotten past and then wouldn't be able to handle it so therefore he goes on a killing spree himself and that's probably what ends up in Purgatory 2 where enough kills were made with the axe but I think enough energy was spent off the protagonist in the object so that therefore the original wield of the axe was unable to wield it and therefore Henry took it in his place sort of thing. I know, fan made theory. Yeah, this was more bloody. And the, the the antagonist was also one of the victims in this tale where um can't quite really remember now, but it was something to do with the antagonist's family not looking out for her, so it's kind of like the witch's house or scenario where the main antagonist is also one of the victims to the game. That's what I like about certain antagonists in games that they're also a victim within their own tales because in a way they suffered a lot in order to get to the point in which they're in also remember like being held up and being trapped in this place yeah this is more of an adventure kind of horror game rather than just being going around a house and trying to decipher the different clues which was in the number two the second volume but I loved that for that because it was a different spin on the series in itself. 
And we get to like these grotesque murders as well. Don't know what happened to the characters. But also is where you can see like the age of the characters developing because well in the first game he was 26 in the first game she was 17 oh gosh i remember you katie you appeared in the first game and you returned to the third game as some sort of spoopy ghost what was it that you didn't do i remember there was something in the game in which you if we traveled around and we go to a certain room and you don't like going into it what was it I can't quite remember now, but it's like a certain condition in which she can't witness or can't feel nearby without her freaking out. And then we get to one of my favorite translations and one of my favorite games period in this community, Purgatory 2. Like, I think this was a much, much more in-depth sequel than the, pre the original game. Like, the original game set the base for Purgatory 2. But Purgatory 2 was where the game was able to thrive and flourish with different characters and different angles towards this story. And being the best horror anime ever, according to a certain other content creator, which I can't disagree with entirely, because I would love to see Purgatory as an anime in a way. You know, just starting out, probably even like before the events that happen at the place called Purgatory, which Emma describes it as, well, not describes it, but names it as Purgatory. Or was it one of her friends that describes it as Purgatory? Or names it Purgatory? I keep going around in circles here. Like, I just love this game in its entirety. Like, the different characters throughout this game all have such different attributes in a way. Henry being mute. Not entire, not not necessarily mute, but choosing not to speak in a way. And we have Ibao is just not he doesn't give, give a damn towards what others think of him, especially as we saw with Emma and all that, for goodness sakes. Like, I could not stand Emma. Like, her personality and the way she treats other people is absolutely diabolical. And I think her redemption arc in the game was just pretty much non-existent. It was just a, pretty much in a way is of um, situational in her situation in Purgatory where Aside two scenarios which happen very early on in the game with the double buttons and the four different buttons that need to be pressed before DO33 re-emerges, she did not contribute towards a group survival whatsoever. If Bao had the brains, Enri had a demonic strength, and then once we get to another demon in the game, they took over because they has essentially had like a synapse link with the rest of Purgatory. And then finally, demonic mode, which I can happily say that I am the fifth recorded person ever to have completed demonic mode. Aside the developer him themselves and three other people, I managed to beat this game. And the first one recorded to beat it in the English language. And also as well, just being the... Either one of the first ones or the first content creator to upload all of the different endings of the game in itself. But even the characters are shown in <laughs> this tale. But then again, we do play as these two characters. Like, we play as Ibao in the first and second and third stages. And then we play as Enri in the final stage of demonic mode. Man, going through this was such a haul in itself. But... I was really happy at the end result when I went down and then went to the left. I know I'm pointing to my right, but I'm pointing left on the camera. Pointing left of DO33 at the very end of the alley where I was like, I've done it. I've managed to complete it. I managed to spam enough on one of those doors so it would break down fast enough. Like that first door on the second screen of the fourth boss is the maker or breaker of your run. Like, if you don't smash it fast enough, y you might as well just press F12. There's just different fan arts of Purgatory 2. Like, I'm not sure if I can show that on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> like, like, all these different fan arts are so creative in their own ways. Like, I love it when there's lots of fan work of different games because it shows that there's a lot of people out there that want to hey there's my run <laughs> it's like it's just such a beautiful thing to behold and being one of the people as well to like witness the not the initial growth of the team but 
just seen like their last five years, five five of their eight years in the last ones. In that, it's just such a roller coaster in itself, and I couldn't be more happy to have them around. But even though they are retiring, I am very happy in which the process was just going through everything in which they translated. I haven't played all of their games. I can probably list off like probably two thirds of these games I have not played. I haven't played Corpse Party Zero, Zero Demo, If, Killer Bear, Desert Hospital, Cross Fear. I haven't played all the Toilet and Wonderland, Hand in Hand. Um, probably only played the most recent version of Aeroni. Uh, for the Prisoners, Made of Farewell Heights, the Pens of how do you pronounce that? Um, Color of Lost Memories, Color 4, B Asterisk X, uh, and also as well part of the object I didn't play. But thank you so much to Memories of Fear for giving us such wonderful memories and all of the hard work that you put into all of your projects because having a really, really good translation of a game is tough it is not just simply translating words from japanese to english using google as a means to do that that's not how it goes you need to be able to understand both languages in a fluent level so if for example if your primary language is english fluently then you also need to translate that fluentness into japanese by learning that language as well if you're looking to translate games at a professional level as Memories of Fear did. Like, they probably say that their work isn't, like, hugely professional, but I can guarantee you that it is. Like, for me, looking at my own videos, I don't feel that they're personally great for me just because I hear my own voice when always um, looking throughout um, editing and then rendering and uploading and then showing my thoughts of the game itself like it can be a little bit nerve-wracking as a content creator to just go through their own work and say i'm really proud of this because you witness every step of the way for the process of making something like editing something translating something you witness every step of the way from a to z from one to nine etc 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 it's like you're not hugely proud of the work that you've done sometimes because you see every single aspect that goes along from the very start of having just a fully japanese game and now it's translated into an english game like there's so much into this that people don't realize so when people say translating a game is easy it is not i will thoroughly miss this team and all their hard work but that doesn't mean to say that we can't play the games in which we have translated and as such always remember to have this particular page up here bookmarked so that if you want to go to their games but therefore there is always a page to where their games are archived which is within their uh j sync page rather than their previous page which has been closed down because I imagine in that page there was also like updates for future games and stuff like that. But once again, thank you so much to the fans who have supported this translation group. If it wasn't for you, I doubt this game or this development development team translation team would have continued translating games for the future. Like if it wasn't for the immense amount of support behind this team, then. I would say that they wouldn't even go as far as, let's say, beyond the Aeroni games, beyond the Purgatory games even, or the Detective and Arbor games. If it wasn't for that support behind the games, and for all of the different things that people have done, like let's say fan art and let's plays and stuff like that, but also as well sharing the game and typing down your comments and love for the game itself when you're playing them, then I don't think this team would have lasted, would have, sorry, it's lasted, I mean, would have done this as long as they did. But I feel like that what they're doing is good for them to start new things in life outside of the pressure and um, situations of what it's like to be a translator and going through this path again and again and again for another game. like. 
I think once you do something for a certain amount of time, you want to move on in life, even though you have fond memories of it, but it's like going through a pinwheel or a circle over and over and over again. Once you complete that circle, it is time to then move on to another game and repeat that cycle. I think in a way, they, memories of fear didn't want to keep going around in a circle, but they kind of like wanted to flee out of orbit. Imagine the cycle itself being in orbit around a planet or a star, like let's say the moon for example, around the Earth. I hope that that is a cycle that doesn't end, for goodness sakes, otherwise our way of life would be drastically different without the moon. We probably wouldn't even be here still, if it wasn't for the moon. But just imagine anything in life being that kind of cycle in a way. You're continuously doing the same thing over and over again, without a kind of a break. And after eight years, I'm not surprised that the team does decide to sit down and say, this is where it ends with Purgatory 2. We're going to end it with the most heinous difficulty thing ever with Demonic Mode. Like, that in a way is an absolute banger to end off your translating hobby career? I would say it's more of a hobby, but it is a career in its own way because you're recognizable for the things that you do and the people around you really look up to you and are inspired by you. So thank you all to both the fans of the translation group, but also to the members of the translation group itself for doing everything that you've done throughout the many years that you've been here and the years that you've been here before I've been here. Thank you all so much for watching, folks. Make sure to check out these games for yourselves. Like, I don't think I even need to put a link in the description below where you need to find them. I think you know that if you've already watched this video all the way through by now but i'm still going to do it anyways because i like giving credit where it's due it kind of gives me some relief knowing that i put something down in which other people can find it like that's the love of doing things like this and sharing projects like this it's like i found it but where can other people find it? But also as well, it just shows a minimal amount of respect towards other people as well when you actually uh, put in the description of your videos where the hell you found this. Because if you don't really link it, then you're really doing this, the developers a bit of dissatisfaction, disservice in a way. But anyways, folks, let's end this off with a positive thing. Thank you all so much for watching, for you guys for watching this video thank you all to everyone who has played the games developed not developed translated by <laughs> memories of fear but also thank you as well to the team itself for initially deciding hey we want to start translating games from japanese to english we want to rebuild one of the games from its original engine into an engine in which people can actually play on outside of japan but thank you all so much for watching guys and take care of yourselves and have a happy, bright, successful future to the members of Memories of Fear. Thank you all so much for everything you've done and take care of yourselves.